Embedded reflection questions are included in this video. If you'd like to explore these collaboratively, visit P2PU and search for the K-12 Online Group. Curriculum plays an important role in schools. It is the framework for what is learned when and in what sequence, based on our beliefs about what children need to become productive members of society. Curriculum is the roadmap for learning. Curriculum is an outline, and not necessarily all the details, of how these goals will be accomplished. It is not the textbook or the digital content, or how these instructional materials will be used by teachers and learners. However, this framework is filled in by classroom practice and instructional materials. And too often in the past, these materials have taken a one-size-fits-all, top-down approach. Rigid pacing, superficial assessment, and curriculum decisions made on the basis of things other than student learning have become all too common. But standards don't have to lead to standardization. What if the same standards, the same curriculum goals, could be achieved like this? Or this. Or even this. I believe that the shift to the Common Core Standards presents a truly unique opportunity for curriculum. With this new framework, decisions about new curriculum are being made all over the country. Millions of dollars are being allocated and spent even as you watch this video. To be most successful with these new standards, we need to see them as a new starting point, not as something just to be layered on top of everything else we've already been doing. This is a time we should be thinking about personalization instead of one-size-fits-all, integrated process and skills instead of isolated content, real world instead of irrelevance, and iteration and collaboration instead of top-down hierarchies. It is time for a new era in curriculum. Beyond the Common Core, there are several other critical developments that make this a unique time for curriculum. One is the advent of digital content. The State Ed Tech Directors Association recently issued a report called Out of Print, Reimagining the K-12 Textbook in a Digital Age, in which they called on policymakers to complete the shift to digital resources in five years. And the textbook, the book itself, was the best technology that we had at the time, 50 plus years ago. At a time where information was scarce, where it was difficult uh, to share it, 
Um, and uh, being able to bind that all together in one book and provide that to every student and every teacher was the best tool that we had at the time. In 2012, it's hard to argue that that is the most efficient uh, method to provide access, particularly given the dramatic changes in student population, where uh, books are one size fits all, our students are hardly, uh, never have been, and are increasingly even less so. With students already using technology outside of school to create their own compelling content, and with some of the research that we cite in the paper and other research that's out there, it talks about how the use of this content can play an increased role in student engagement and student achievement and with the flexibility that digital content provides for us, especially open educational resources, can we really afford to wait any longer? Open educational resources, or OER, are not only free and digital, but are also open licensed so that anyone can use, adapt, and redistribute them. This permits legal remixing and sharing and encourages deeper learning. If it's open education resources, you can make good content better for this student and that student and that student because you can change it each time to meet that student's needs. While reducing cost is often a motivation for using OER, this may not be the most significant benefit. The state of Utah has been a pioneer in using OER in K-12. And it really turned out that cost was not the major factor that drove the interests of the teachers in the districts that were interested in participating with us. They were actually more interested in working with electronic resources that would increase their access and ability to use multimedia and other electronic resources in a seamless way. They wanted to have input in the design of our books. The benefits of openness go far beyond instructional materials. Engaging in a collaborative, open process builds teacher professionalism and ultimately creates a richer learning environment. So Open Text gave us some different options. We know that teachers have always shared materials and they've always shared books. This really helps us formalize that sharing process. One of the things that we found is that as teachers came together to create textbooks and to really talk about their content, those became very empowering conversations for those teachers. And they began to engage with their own content and pacing and scope and sequence in a way that hadn't really been open to them before because it meant that was how the book was put together. And so their conversations about what was going to happen in their classroom opened up a lot of depth and complexity as they began to plan things. Beyond textbooks, open resources can include video, simulations, and interactivities. Open practices can lead to teachers and learners creating their own learning experiences and collaborating with others to address real-world problems. One example of digital and open content in action is the work of Paul Allison, a high school English teacher in New York City. Paul has worked with New York City Writing Project's Youth Voices Initiatives and Peer-to-Peer -peer University to experiment with an innovative new curriculum based on Common Core standards. This curriculum includes a series of learning challenges for English language arts, history social studies, arts and media, and science. These challenges incorporate competencies such as citing evidence in conversations, independent reading, text-dependent research, formulating arguments in areas of interest, and self-directed learning. Yeah, it's different because um, usually we would have like classrooms, but now we do all of our work on computers. So it's like we manage our own classes and our own time period, so it's kind of different now because everything is on the computer. So Paul set up a grid for us, if you can see it like this. Uh -huh. And it has all the stuff that we need to do for each subject. And we just cross it out every time we complete one of the tasks. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I'm doing like, uh, like two grids because I need two Englishes. So I did about like, I say like eight on both. Well, my, my economic paper is on um, which president um, has the best economic proposal. 
So that's what I'm working on in economics. Wow. So basically, um, I had to do research on Obama and Mitt Romney and see which economic proposal I like the best and which economic proposal is better for the economy. Like the way you research is like annotating and then after you annotate, you go into the dialectical notes and then you write your draft and, and the essay and just put it all together. Um, well, my, my topic is um, is like how does music affect mood? So I'm like looking up that stuff. But right now I'm actually working on a book because there's like independent reading. So I'm reading the book and like I have to do stuff on that and I'd rather do that. But. Students can also earn badges for the work they complete. You have to, yeah, it's you basically have to just it. like after you finish the assignments or whatever on the PTP thing, you can just they give you the badges like after you finish all four of the one set thing. So, yeah. Um, I like it because it shows us like what we earned. So, like so far, I have two, and I feel good about myself because I accomplished something. So, yeah, it makes me feel good. Like it shows me that I can do more. So, and it like, it pushes me to earn more badges and stuff, so, yeah, I like it. I, I enjoy it because it's independent work, and uh, I'm a very independent person, so, yeah. like, I can accomplish something and just go on my own, but sometimes, like, I would, like, I, I, when I'm stuck, like, I need a teacher's help, and, like, I usually, I do this when I'm home, so, I, it's just hard, like, I don't have a teacher there to tell me or help me, so, I just have to wait until the next day for me to see the teacher, and that's it. I'm just Hon getting used to it. Honestly, I feel like, like, the computer helps a lot, because it's on the computer or whatever, but even if the assignments weren't on the computer and it was just independent work, it would still kind of be the same, like, thing. This curriculum is collaborative and open. In fact, students can and have improved upon the challenges and other teachers can clone any of these challenges and modify them to best meet the needs of their own students. This innovative experiment combines all the elements we've talked about common core alignment, digital content, openness, personalization, and relevance. This example highlights the final piece of the puzzle, teachers and learners being empowered to unleash innovation in their classroom. We know the power of personalization, self-directed learning, and other innovative practices. However, in too many places, teachers have been stripped of the ability to do what they know is best for learners. Now is the time to change that. I believe that if we seize the opportunity that Common Core presents by incorporating digital tools, openness, and student and teacher innovation, we can achieve some incredible things. The do-it-yourself or DIY movement has introduced many to a feeling of agency, has reinvigorated our senses of personal involvement, and has resulted in tremendous innovations. What if we embrace this as a learning culture and turn DIY into DIT. Do it together. As a community, we have everything we need to create new curricula that accelerates deeper learning. Together, we could shift the billions spent on instructional materials toward internal investments in learning spaces and practices that prepare our students for the future. Teachers, learners, and the community at large could capitalize on the affordances of digital content and tools as well as openness to create a bright future for our schools and our world. This is a unique time to launch a new era for curriculum. Let's seize this opportunity and do something amazing with it.